It's my home primarily. I've I'd never bought a boat to go travelling on it. I wanted it to live on. As I work here, you see, you know, just to improve my quality of life. You bang your head a lot, and I felt, I felt like I needed a change. To university as a mature student, and um, uh, I, did, I bought the boat because I wanted somewhere to live where I could have my daughter as well, not going to halls or anything, you see. Um, got sold my flat, so I had some capital, and um, yeah, so it was, uh, it was really just, um, you know, getting everything right for uni, to be honest, which made me buy the boat because it was near to uni. And I came to, to do law at Lincoln, I thought well, I might as well do it, you know. So, well, unfortunately, I only did two years, but then you know, got health problems and I ended up having to. Bit of a wrong time, really, in your 50s to come and, you know. I wanted to do it, but I didn't have it. You know what I mean? I loved it, mate. I loved it. Well, I did it. I did it, you know, for in, in I did it, it for real, didn't I? So to get all the padding around it was just super interesting. It, it, it became too much, really. I had to make a decision as to whether to continue, you know, um, and it was too much. Yeah. I've just I've got um, I've got type one diabetes, atopic eczema, um, sleep apnea, osteoporosis, and various things. You know, because my skin kept flaring up. You know, and it was only so much of that you can take. It was horrible because I really, you know, I wanted to get the degree like that. Um, you know, you have to. Be in touch with yourself, I think, don't you? To, to realise that actually I'm probably going to do more harm than, than good trying to do this. One of the main reasons why I swapped as well from an hour boat to, to this, because I can sit inside with my dad, whereas before he was always cold, so inside and I was at the stern. So, uh, you know, so I bought this because we can both, you know. A bit nice and warm inside and go up the river and he looked at me. He's a former teacher but he's got dementia now, bless him. So. My dad lives in, in a home in Spalding, so I go and see him at least once a week or bring him over here. But he's not very well, bless him. A lot of his brain's gone. He knows who I am, yeah. you know, but he, he, um, he, a couple of weeks ago he asked, he asked me who my mum and dad was. Yeah, you know, which is like, oh, that's the first time is, you've got to just, it is what it is, you know, it's not his fault. There's a, there's a sense of detachment, I'd say, living on a boat. You feel nicely detached, because you, you know, you're not part of the door slamming and stuff like that, because you, you know, you generally, and you, and you can bugger off. I think that sort of only confirms the separation you feel when you're on your boat as opposed to, you know, because when it's windy and it's raining outside, you're cosy inside, your boat's banging about, but you're all right, you know. Well, definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely there is, yeah. Yeah. There's 30,000 people living on boats in the UK. I think many people who wouldn't want to live on a boat are living on a boat, it must be great. It is great, but it, you know, it also comes with its tests, which you wouldn't get with a house. You know what I mean? Definition. You're compromising a lot of the simple things on li in life. You know, it was just it was just easy. You know, it was just easy selling the flat, having the money, seeing somewhere where you could make it to a home. Up in the boat, really. Sometimes it's uh, that's my story. That's what I'm sticking to. You know what I mean?